And this is applicable. You don't need a special tool except your breath and yourself, right? So I usually sit on the side of my bed and then you put your feet down so that it's on the ground. And then I put the tip of my tongue at the roof of my mouth and that signals my body to be completely in alignment. So think of, you know, some people say God, divine, source, universe. So if you think of a straight line from the heavens all the way through your tongue all the way through the center of your body to the center of the earth, then I start to breathe, right? And my goal in the morning is always to find that center because from that place, we can operate from a place of our heart, right? And our mind also connected to our heart. Just think about your soul, heart, mind, body connection. So when you breathe in, you can take a deep breath through your nose. So as if, just think of, you can see the earth, the beach behind me, So think of the energy of blue, right? Water, because water cools the head. Based on Chinese medicine, it cools the head. Hey there, my friend. Welcome to the Powerful and Passionate Healthcare Professionals Podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina. I am a cardiothoracic surgery PA with a background in public health and neuroscience. I'm also your peak performance coach. I had to say no to working extreme long hours where I was always on call and feeling exhausted, underappreciated, and undervalued, and said, heck yes, to a life and career that elevates my energy and passion without compromising my health and sanity. Now, I'm among the mission to support ambitious healthcare professional like you with a demanding career to become a confident leader who are living purposefully and fulfilled to truly be both a powerhouse in your career and a passionate person in life. Let's start our journey today. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Powerful and Passionate Healthcare Professionals Podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina. And today we have another lovely guest and her and I, Vivian, and we are actually co-authors on a book called Asian Women Who Boss. So that's coming out in the next spring. So for all you ladies out there, you know, you have a message, no matter what type of healthcare professional you are, you can stand out, stand up to be that influential key player that your organization cannot afford to lose. And sometimes you can be the one who's running that organization. So I'm so excited for Vivian to be here with us to really explore the power within you and what that even means when you have a business and if you're a senior level or leadership and running that business, running that organization, it's no longer just clinical anymore. And there's so much more than that. So Welcome, Vivian. Please introduce yourself. Thank you, Sabrina. So everyone in the healthcare field, I was in your shoes in the past. I was a physical therapist, and then I turned into the holistic world because I realized that my segment wasn't enough to really help heal the person, right? So when we're talking about healthy, I thought, well, maybe the physical is important. Yes, but there's the emotional component. It sometimes drives the physical. There's the mental component, because if your mindset is only limited to certain things, then sometimes also it stops you from healing fully, right? And then there's also the spiritual component. So then I started exploring different avenues and different skills. So that's how I ended up with like eight different modalities under my tool belt. Because I'm like, but how about this? How about this? How about this? And then eventually you have to integrate and figure out, okay, what would truly help the client now? Because it doesn't mean that you have all those different challenges, right? Sometimes it's just one of those things that's causing some unrest within you. Hence, we become sometimes unhealthy because we're looking for solution for certain things because we're unsatisfied, right? Like we're not at peace within ourselves. So that's how my journey began. You know, that little like, well, what else is there? What else is there? <laughs> yeah, that is so amazing. Recently, I did a TV segment actually because the new age of burned out on the US based study, guess what, is 30 
to. And most people are just starting their career or just have worked for only a few years at that age. Think about if we're so young and already losing our aim, losing that drive, right what about the rest of our life just yeah. because in healthcare we are so trained so well trained mm-hmm. to be a good provider a practitioner a therapist and you have all those knowledge but knowledge is not success it's not achievement it's only part of it right yes. even you have an eq and iq it's still just one part of it they're just tools how do mm-hmm. we have that success is the other part is how quickly you can remove yourself from the sabotaging behavior that you don't even know that you're doing to yourself. And even you know these things, how do you quickly pivot now into that resourceful gratitude and always knowing how to move forward? And I think that's something that we never are taught is that interpersonal and the self-leader part. So I always think, we don't have a burnout issue. It's a dilemma. It's actually a boundary issue and leadership issue. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And I think it's the expectation of society, of culture, of the tradition. For example, if you're in the healthcare field, you're expected to always be well, right? Like, as if doctors and therapists never get sick. That is not the reality, though, because we do, right? Especially if our tank is empty. So that's why the holistic approach does make sense for a lot of people nowadays. However, it doesn't mean, right, because we have old programs and patterns that we carry within our system, in the family. Like, think about it, the expectations of your boss, if you're working for someone, it does change the equation when you're in the system already, right? So then how can you stay healthy? Because remember, if you're the goose that lays the golden egg, and if you're not well, how are you going to give a sound advice to your patient or your client? It doesn't work like that. Exactly. (laughs) And if we are not truly aligned on what we say to our patients and we do differently, think about how that changes our mental capacity. Your discordance make Mm -hmm. you less confident in yourself. And that's how imposter syndrome comes in. I don't even do what I need to tell people. How do I know this is it? These are the Mm -hmm. things that people need to do despite all the studies, training, whatnot. So unless we stand into the shoes of our own message, our own belief system, then we become someone who feel like we're only talking about principles and that is become unrealistic. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, the idealistic part, it's not ideal for everyone. It's ideal perhaps for you. So you do need to know what works for you as an individual. And then how do you mingle with other people and interact with them to exchange that goodness, right? So think about if you take care of yourself, that you're bringing in goodness within yourself. So then people really hang out with you anyway. When they see you and they are exposed to you or they're hanging out with you, they just love your energy. So that's the whole key with integration and alignment, right? So physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, if what you really say is what you do and that's what you feel and that's how you think, that's alignment. That like you're really walking, walking the walk and talking the talk. So when you deliver a message to people, how powerful could it be that when you say something, it almost like pierces their heart and soul and they just, they just get you. And then they're like, oh, I want to do that too. I want to be that person. I mean, who doesn't want to be a good mother, a good partner? Like it doesn't just translate to you're such a good doctor. You're such a good a healthcare professional, but you're just good everywhere, right? Like you just feel good. Everything you do becomes a bonus, so to speak. (laughs) And you're happy and content and at peace. That's everyone's goal, I think. And I want to share with people that instead of thinking, oh my God, I'm going to be like that in like so many months or weeks or years, I just think of one day as a lifetime. I think of it that way, right? What if this is my last day on earth and who can I show up as, who can I be in order for me to feel good about myself in in case I'm leaving, right? I'm leaving the planet. So if that is all you can think of, and then the next day is a brand new day, probably you're going to look at it differently, right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Because your perspective changes. 
when yes. we are thinking too far ahead, mm -hmm. actually two things happen. If the goal is too big, too unrealistic, mm -hmm. nothing that we can measure to feel like we earned it, we actually got to that point, people start procrastinating because they know it might be difficult. And then this difficulty, quote unquote, is the second part. You actually made it way out of proportion. And mm -hmm. instead, it actually can be very doable. So yes. the two things I always ask people, one is when you create this end goal, make it so visible for you, like you are living in that dream already. You can visualize it down to the details of what that, look like and what do you have to do and who you're involving with to make that happen and second part is how do you feel how good would it feel once you accomplish that goal we are yeah. emotional beings we know yes. our midbrain our olympic side of our brain is the major core driving force for majority of people we make decisions based on our emotion Definitely. even our primitive brain right fly and mm -hmm. fly it's emotion based on pleasure or danger. So you can <laughs> run toward the pleasure things that yes. are going to move you forward and then run away from danger. And that's why avoidance is sabotaging, right? Mm -hmm. We tend to not want to face some of the problems thinking time will heal. Well, nah, it, it just mm -hmm. burying your subconsciousness will bob up somewhere else, right? <laughs> so just like Vivian, if you bring it back to that one day, now it's so tangible. You're not yes. thinking about 10 years or even 10 days from now. You're thinking about right now. Mm -hmm. Have you lived today? Exactly. How yes. do you want to live? Did you talk to your significant others, your best friends, your family members who actually mean a lot for you and who you actually work so hard for them? And maybe you haven't communicated in the level they understood. And maybe mm -hmm. you just keep saying, well, I did this because of you. But if you put that attitude in it, instead of the way that they like to share mm -hmm. message, then it becomes a barrier instead of a driving force. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And mm -hmm. one thing, you know, Vivian does so well is to bring these things, right? Like thinking differently. So I do like you to explain a little bit more. How can we show up differently and better? Once we have that practice of our own, our own health practice, right? Whether we have a physical location for patient or online, it, there's more than just clinical. So yes. what can we do to position ourselves in a better spot? And so we can keep mm -hmm. going. Yeah. So I'm going to share my practice every single morning. And this is applicable. You don't need a special tool except your breath and yourself, right? So I usually sit on the side of my bed and then you put your feet down so that it's on the ground. And then I put the tip of my tongue at the roof of my mouth and that signals my body to be completely in alignment. So think of, you know, some people say God, divine source, universe, so if you think of a straight line from the heavens all the way through your tongue, all the way through the center of your body to the center of the earth, then I start to breathe, right? And my goal in the morning is always to find that center because from that place, we can operate from a place of our heart, right? And our mind also connected to our heart. Just think about your soul, heart, mind, body connection. So when you breathe in, you can take a deep breath through your nose so as if, just think of, you can see the earth, the beach behind me. So think of the energy of blue, right? Water, because water cools the head. Based on Chinese medicine, it cools the head. So if you think of water coming through the earth, through your feet, through your legs, to the back of your spine, to the top of your head, and that same water will flow down in front of you and it becomes this fire energy from the heart to the belly and the pubic bone because we need that warming system, right? To help us, to help our organs move better, to help us actually think better. So we need some fire energy somewhere, right? So we're gonna find a balance of water and fire in our system. So the first thing you do is you just sit beside your bed, right? On your bedside, put your feet down and put your fingertips underneath your sit bones. And you put the tip of your tongue at the roof of your mouth. So let's do this together three times. So let's all take a deep breath in, visualizing blue. And then we release with open mouth, red. 
two more times. Take a deep breath in blue. And then breathe out red. One more time, take a deep breath in with blue. And then breathe out red. So we know it's a brand new day. So we think of a grounding tube from our tailbone all the way to the bottom of the earth. And if you think about yesterday, because yesterday was yesterday, you already slept and today is another day, we unplug from all of our yesterdays. So I visualize unplugging that golden tube because it was old, right? Because you got to be present in the moment so that you can actually think, you know how they say, think at your feet. And you can actually be in that moment instead of thinking about the old stuff. So think about unplugging the old tube you have that has all the issues that you've had, all the resentment and the anger and the frustration, right? Like, so unplug that and roll it up, unplug it from the earth. We put it in a golden case. We put a few golden rose bombs inside, throw it away into the ocean for explosion and ground the particles. So now ask the divine to give you a brand new set of golden tube from your tailbone. It's hollow in the middle and it could be as big as you want it to be. So for those professionals that have a lot of responsibilities, I make it big, like almost as big as my mid thigh or even around my whole legs, right? And the middle is hollow because I'm able to release everything that I no longer need or it doesn't serve me anymore. It doesn't help me in the present. So I have to just let that go. So that's what you're releasing when you let it go. So when you're bringing your brand new tube for the day, you bring it all the way 4,000 miles below you. And then you hug the earth with the very bottom. And then I connect to source, God, universe. So however you can think about a golden light emanating all the way to the heavens. So it really surpasses and bypasses the earth, the galaxy, the solar system. And we're going all the way where God started creating us. And when you see a bright light, you just bring it into you. So you become the vessel of that goodness. And I bring it all the way to the earth through my body, basically. And you keep on breathing, just like the rhythm we started, right? And then I form a golden bubble around each one of you, whoever's watching or listening to this, and allow the, this beautiful gold to just envelope that bubble. So if you think of stretching your arms out, and you can even like create a nice circle around you and just allow the goodness of the universe to penetrate through all of these bubbles that you have. That's our aura, our energetic system. And we allow ourselves to be protected and safe and happy and in our own, own body. And then I call my full name three times so that you own your energy system. It's not because of this person or that person. It's you in there. Like God created us to be a certain person, right? So when you embody the wholeness of who you are, mind, body, spirit, what happens is things come to you with ease. So when people say it's hard to make money, just because they believe so and they think that way, but it's not because money is energy. So when you are in the right place at the right time and you are feeling good, what happens is people gravitate toward you. So you can see how money comes in with ease, grace, and flow. It's really not hard, you guys. That's like a, a myth. <laughs> <laughs> because if money is energy and it supports you, you have your own responsibility to feel good in the beginning of each day so that things will come to you with ease, grace, and flow. So that's really the message I share with people because they always think of the negative, right? That money is hard to make. That's a, an old program. It's a belief system that's been perpetrated by so many people. So it's just a matter of you feeling good first in the beginning of the day. And I do this, by the way, not just in the morning. I do it also by the time I close my day. And I return all the energies of other people that belong to them back to them. Because I don't need to take on, especially you guys, the doctors, the healthcare professionals. We tend to own our patient stuff, right? I used to do that. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I return all the energies of the people I have encountered back to their higher selves. 
So it could be energies from my husband, from my children, from my clients, for some of you, for your patients. So try this meditation again by the end of the day and then say, I return all of the energies of other people back to their higher selves. So by the time you go to bed, right, you actually close your loop, close your day, and you are in charge of your own body because you got to rejuvenate it, right? So you think sleeping will do it. Sometimes it doesn't because you did not return the energies of other people back to them. And they're trying to get energy from you in a way, right? Because it's an exchange. But if they cannot, if you cannot teach them how to do it themselves, they will always depend on you for something. Does that make sense? It's so true. And this is so useful. People you do it first thing in the morning and last thing at night. And it's similar to what I always promote of my two-minute mental reboot session. We have to separate these baggages we have from one patient encounter, one meeting, and then start fresh into the next one. And that's why even those two minutes, what I have come up with is by my professor in Stanford, where he learned that these specific positive intelligence cues and exercises can pivot and boost from a team base where they improve 37% after consistently doing it for six weeks and less time off, less people feeling like they are fatigued because you set yourself up on consistently bring back energy and focus. And I promote these short breaks throughout the day. And Perfect. you also need to do these bigger exercise to kick yourself in the right stage yes. first thing in the morning. We know mm -hmm. plenty of study have been shown that morning routine is so crucial. It's not even just about getting up earlier. It's really on the very first hour, two hours of what you do with your day, getting on the phone, scrolling through your emails, your messages, all is for what other people demand of your time. Instead, mm -hmm. we got to focus on how we want to tone ourselves up yes. first thing in the morning. How do we want to empower this being? And then it becomes you value your self-worth. It's not a luxury. Excellent. It's a necessity. Yes, definitely. Because you can't give to others what you don't have. <laughs> you just can't. Yeah, just like you have one pitcher of water, and then you're trying to quench the thirst for everybody else. While you're pouring, 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 you forgot your own cup. And then, <laughs> do you really want it to overpour for someone? And they, do you want them to drown? Or do you want it to save a little bit for your own self? Because that picture is not going to be filled forever. You have to put back into that picture. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Wow. So this is amazing. And I always conclude our talk to bring back a little human side of all of this. Yeah. So I ask our speakers about what about you? What's your holistic life look like? And now I say there are 10 different components. There's mm -hmm. a health fitness, emotional well-being, right? I talk about mental immunity, personal characteristic, spirituality your love and relationship, and your social life, your quality of life. How do you want to live with your family, yourself, right? Like, what does that mean? A beach, right, Vivian, and versus mm -hmm. mountains, urban, and financial intelligence, right? What Vivian talks about, the money mindset. And most people are never thought about that way. And career building and life mission. So when you think about all 10, Vivian, for you, which one do you think you have the strongest and things you can leverage on the most? And what are the one or two things that you wish you could have dived into deeper? So for me, because I mentioned physical, emotional, relational, and spiritual, right? So if you think of a bubble, like a rainbow, the very outermost part is the spiritual. So actually, when you start working on spiritual, everything else starts to line up. And because we have a whole lifetime to work on that, right? <laughs> yeah, don't be too hard on yourself. It's like, oh my God, I'm not there yet. So when you, like I, I talk about human design and depending on every single one, we have our own blueprint, so to speak, right? So for me, my thing is satisfaction. When I'm satisfied, obviously, depending on your standard, right? What is satisfaction to you? That's why I have these little morning routines or rituals and also end of the day rituals. So if I have 
three things that I have to do per day because I used to be an overachiever and I would put eight on my to-do list. And then of course, I that's a self-sabotage tendency because you can't do all of it in one day. So then you don't feel good about yourself. And then that becomes a habit, right? So I always start with spiritual. That's why I offer that meditation in the morning. And then everything else honestly falls into place, the relationship, the emotions, and the physicality of it. And so whatever makes you feel good first, that's the first thing you do. That's my suggestion to the audience. And then the other two, whatever that important thing is, I tend to um, I think of it as a, like a, what's my monthly goal, and then I break it down into pieces every week. So then it's more manageable, right? And then for the day, like in order to achieve that weekly goal, what do I do next? So obviously I'm a generator in human design. So I have a lot of energy, but focusing that energy on what matters is really the key. So I do have to lead my life a certain way, right? So every one of us is different. And that's the beauty of God here is he made us all different because we complement one another when we meet. That's the key there. So for me, spiritual is first. And then the relationship comes because my emotional and physical reality, they just all fall into the right alignment for me, right? So everybody else is a different way of aligning. And so when you are in that place, you notice you just feel good. You make more money. The right people come into your life. That's how I summarize that is I start with spiritual and then the relationship, emotional and physical come into play. Awesome. So appreciate you giving us your way of picturing that. For me, what you touch upon that goal setting and then seeing that bigger picture and breaking it down is what we talk about the SMART goals, right? Something specific, measurable, Mm -hmm. attainable. You can keep yourself accountable to that and not thinking it too big and not able to do. So one of the tools that all my clients have found most helpful is I create this burned out bulletproof alignment worksheet for them to do it on a weekly basis because we actually earned our weekly time, our little me time, right? Grab the your favorite drink, have a little time for yourself to yeah. realize what are your top three non-negotiable value system? Because if we have clarity on that, then mm-hmm. we know all the things that somehow pop into our head for our self-expectation or external expectation they have to align with our core goals for this week. And if it's right. not our non-negotiable value system, then it's an automatic no. Now you yeah. have decide on how to set healthy boundary and no longer feeling like, oh, am I going to miss out on this? Will people feel bad that I don't do that favor for them? Actually, you need to live your life by your own design and not just dragging by everybody else's. And besides these three core things, I also ask people on the personal character part, what are some of the skills that you are good at, but you need to dive deeper to show up better? And Mm -hmm. how are you going to do that? By self-study or connecting with people? And what are other people that you really need to pay attention to this week no matter it's your professional growth or personal. And even just write down that one person's name, right? To really try to reach out. Can you imagine? There are, right? Every single week, you can do that. Are you going to build that strong network of connection and really truly be someone who are resourceful, who are standing out and making that great impact? Right. Yeah. 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 So for any of our audience out there, feel free to send me an email. I'll shoot that over to you. You can just send it to Sabrina at sabrinarunback.com. And I know Vivian also has all those exciting things she's working on. And she also (laughs) run her own TV show. And I'm so glad that she invited me to speak on that later on. And so tell us more about the other exciting stuff, um, where people can find you and how can they watch your show? Yeah, definitely. I'm on Facebook called Human MRI, Roku TV, Android TV, Apple TV, and all the different channels, YouTube, Vivian Money Magnet, right? So it's called My Spiritual Money RX. It's on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Pacific time. So you guys can tune into that. I also have a TV show called My Spiritual GPS on Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Pacific time. So those are the uh, the different 
uh, channels that you can watch that show. And for those of you who are interested in my book called Money Blocks, 90 days, pretty much you can have money in 90 days or less in any economy. Uh, That book is in Amazon, but you can go to overwhelm911.com and click for that specific book on money blocks, right? And for those of you who are interested in learning more about how do you actually integrate all these different things, right? There's so many things about money is just energy, obviously, physically, emotionally, relationally, and spiritually, you can set up a clarity call with me. You can go to that overwhelm911.com and set up a time to connect with me. So thank you for inviting me, Sabrina. This is awesome. Thanks for being here and give us all those amazing resources. And then can't wait for all the amazing things you're continuously to put out there. And yes. I know we are going to have a long relationship going forward as we're complimenting each other on how yes. we can really bring people into that day of they feel fulfilled, they're comfortable, they're secure, but mm-hmm. also not having these emotional roller coaster feeling like we're overwhelmed. And we yes. can, all can feel more appreciated and being valued in what we do. And so thank you everyone for listening in. If you love this episode, please give us a review on Apple Podcast and wherever you love to listen to podcasts and share with other people. If you yes. know you got out one thing that triggered your mind, you know there's going to be 10 other people who <laughs> are going to do the same. So right. love this sharing and thank you. Looking forward for another week of episode. Tone in every Wednesday as we drop a new episode for you. If you want to learn more topic, feel free to send me an email, Sabrina right. at sabrinaroundback.com. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye. All right, my friend. How did you love this episode? Make sure to subscribe to our show so you can continue to build your positive intelligence for that beautiful mind of yours to live powerfully and passionate. I know this just the tip of the iceberg. You probably have a lot more questions on actually how do I implement those things into my own life? Well, this is the solution. Joining us inside the private Facebook group go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash powerful passionate where I go live weekly to answer any questions that you have and continue to put more resources for you to help you to get to that point. You can be both powerful and passionate where you're no longer working on any mundane work and truly focusing on the things that matter. You can be both powerful and passionate where you can overcome any mental roadblocks keeping you from success. You can be both powerful and passionate where you feel energized from the moment you woke up to the time you go to bed. Join me and together we can create a life where you can be both powerful and passionate.